It's time to move on to our final video in converting this Master Replica's lightsaber. Here in part 3 we're going to talk about blade diffusion. Blade diffusion is critical to getting an evenness to the light the whole length of your blade. On our original Master Replica's blade, which I have here, because it was actually a string of LEDs inside of it, the primary diffusion was actually a mostly translucent foam rubber running the length of it. It was then coated on the inside of the blade with a white uh, plastic that helped further uh, diffuse it, almost a double diffusion. Okay. Because we're moving to a new blade, uh, in this case, I've gone with a clear blade, but it doesn't matter whether or not you're using clear or a uh, red acrylic for a day blade or even a trans white that's very, very similar to this. You still need good blade diffusion. Let's take a look at what we actually mean by that. So this is a clear blade, unaltered at this point in time, and I'm just going to hook it up uh, into my converted Darth Vader saber. Okay, so with the blade inserted, I'm going to turn it on. Okay, and we'll actually turn out the lights here and see if we can get a good view of that. Hopefully the camera picks it up. Okay, so what we actually have is very, very bright light near the LED uh, at the hilt. And if I go down, a very, very, very bright tip where it's mirrored to reflect the light back. But in between... Basically, you can see right through it. It doesn't look like anything at all. In fact, more of the light is actually reflecting off of the table and my hand here sitting underneath it. So that doesn't help us out at all. So what we need is a method. What we need is a method for getting an even light flow all the way along that. Even if we were to pop out the clear blade and go back to the original trans white, I've taken out the foam gasket and turn it on. Even then, I actually have much the same problem. Very, very bright. And then it fades out as it goes the length, along with a very, very bright tip again. So even though there is an inner layer of diffusion, uh, it still doesn't work all that perfectly. A little bit better than the clear blade at the moment, but still not great. So, let's look at some techniques for getting this blade properly diffused. Diffusion is basically to get the light to scatter as it passes through the blade, so that it looks like it's being emitted from the blade, and you get that nice glow. To do that, we're going to use cellophane wrap, the kind that are usually used to wrap great big gift baskets or giveaways. Now before we do that, uh, I'm going to take my blade, you can see here I've got a, a clear blade that I'm going to do the diffusion on first, and clean it up just a little bit. I want to be about as dust free as I possibly can, so you want to keep your work surface as clean as possible, and I want to clean up the blade. Uh, I've just got a piece of microfiber cloth here, you can see a small piece. And I'm going to take a piece of doweling rod, 3 8 doweling rod, that we're going to need later in the process anyway. And it's simply a matter of uh, passing it through the blade a couple of times, twisting and turning as we go, and that should remove most of the dust. So I've done that a couple of times, and that will get the dust out of the blade itself. What I have in front of me now is a roll of cellophane, uh, one mil cellophane. I bought it in a 40 inch wide roll, uh, about 100 feet of it, so more than enough to do all the blades that I've got uh, and make a mistake or two if I absolutely have to. Uh, lots of places that you can get this. I ordered mine online because that ended up being cheapest. What we're going to do is we're going to try to roll out about 7 feet of this uh, and that will be enough to diffuse a single blade. Uh, while we roll that out, a few things to keep in mind. We want to try to keep it again as dust free as possible. Um, so make sure that you're keeping your work surface uh, clean. We also want to make sure that we don't scratch it and probably most importantly make sure that you don't wrinkle it as it unrolls. Uh, a wrinkle in the cellophane can actually create what looks like a hot spot uh, in your blade as you're going there. Alright, so now that we've got our piece cut about seven feet long, uh, we're going to take our doweling rod. Uh, basically just purchased a uh, 3 8 doweling rod. 
uh, by about uh, four feet long from Home Depot. Uh, and what this will do is it give us something to actually wrap our cellophane around and then it'll facilitate inserting it into our saber blade here in a few minutes. Uh, basically it's just a matter of keeping everything as tight as possible. So I'm going to pull the cellophane, make sure that I've got this all squared up uh, and very 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 tightly roll this uh, up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I know some people have uh, tried scotch tape uh, and that may work as well, but I find that it's okay just to keep the tension, get it rolled on there. Once you get kind of the first roll done, it becomes very, very easy to keep it tight. You might want to put a little bit of outward pressure, kind of pulling to the outside as you're pulling it. We'll keep it straight. And basically that's all there is to it. If you want a bit of a, a tip as to how I was trying to keep it clean, just a technique that I use, um, working on obviously a long flat surface with the uh, cellophane feeding towards me, my microfiber cloth, and basically about every half turn I give it a swipe. Uh, basically I'm catching enough of it on what will be the inside to make sure that there's no dust or anything like that, as well as wiping the actual doweling rod itself, which is the outside of the cellophane. Uh, and that makes sure that I'm catching everything as I go. I'm also inspecting as I go, so if I see anything that gets caught up in there, I can always back up uh, a half a roll or a roll uh, just to catch it as I go. I'm a bit uptight about those things, uh, but it works pretty well working on a flat surface. You're just giving it a couple of swipes, and then another half roll, and then again, a couple of swipes. And basically that manages to keep it uh, pretty much as, as clean as you need it to. Okay, so now that I got my cellophane nicely wrapped, you can see on the one end I did it pretty much flush, uh, flush with the one end. That's the side we're going to insert all the way to the end, uh, and it's wrapped very, very tightly. All right, I'm going to take my nice clean blade and basically take the end of that. And in this case, it's come just a bit unraveled because I made a nick in it about the center piece, but that's okay. And we are going to insert that into the blade, keeping it tightly wrapped around there, basically until we get all the way to just before the end. Um, I'm going to put the cap, I'm going to put the end cap on there, because I want to have a good firm place where I want that to be, and I'm going to push it right up to the end there, okay, without pushing it off. Now, coming back to the other end, this is one of the reasons why I don't like to, uh, to tape anything down because uh, it makes it a lot easier. You can see my cellophane actually sticks out the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to basically take an X-Acto knife uh, and I'm going to start slicing around, make sure I've got it nice and sharp, and I'm going to start cutting around that to get it flush with the end. So just got my X-Acto knife and basically just going around, cutting along the edges, don't have to go too deep because what will happen is, is as you actually make the incisions at a certain level of depth, the cellophane itself, because it's actually quite thin, will simply start to peel away. So that's actually all I'm doing is, is I'm continuing just to rotate it around there with the knife, cutting it off, and of course as I go, several of it will unravel. and then I can keep cutting, getting deeper and deeper each time until eventually I will get all the way down to the wood doweling. Okay, so once I've got the cellophane all trimmed off on the excess, it's basically time to now unravel this thing. So with the end flush on the other end, making sure that this tip doesn't actually come off, uh, we're going to basically just start twisting in the opposite direction with our doweling rod and the cellophane is going to essentially unwrap itself from the doweling rod and work itself to be flush against the edge of the saber blade. 
So eventually as it unravels and goes the length, it should look uh, something like that where it will unravel itself uh, to, the, uh, to the inner edge there. Uh, I'm just going to give it a couple of taps just to make sure that it gets right down right to the end uh, against the tip there. It looks actually pretty good. And despite being clear, you can actually see it's almost taking on a bit of a reflective uh, view or a reflective uh, properties at the moment. Okay, but that's basically it for our diffusion. So let's hook up a lightsaber and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's take a look at what it looks like when it's all done. We have our converted Darth Maul lightsaber. We've inserted our clear blade, uh, now fully diffused. So we're going to turn that on. Now red doesn't pick up all that well on cameras, either video or, uh, or photos, uh, but you should be able to see that the blade actually looks pretty good. Uh, in person it's very, very even. Uh, kind of got a good view of it there on the camera that you can see from beginning to end we have a very, very, very evenly lit blade. And the diffusion, particularly with the clear blade, glows really, really nicely. Got a nice saber look to it. So next up we're going to do some comparisons, um, showing the diffused blade against undiffused blades and of course comparison to the original Master Replica LEDs. So here are our comparisons. We're going to compare our diffused blade to an undiffused blade, both with the upgraded and converted LEDs, as well as a comparison to the original Master Replicas. So here we go. Uh, so we'll start with our fully upgraded lightsaber. Uh, in this case it's our, our Darth Vader. Uh, the upgraded single Cree LED with a diffused blade, clear blade. Turn it on, you get a view of what it looks like. Very nice, very bright. We have an upgraded uh, Darth Maul uh, lightsaber. This is the undiffused blade, and it's just there as a reminder of what it's like when you don't diffuse the blade. You can see right through it, almost nothing. And then lastly, we'll uh, take a look at an original Master Replicas. Uh, in this case, it's uh, one of our Darth Mauls that hasn't been converted yet. So, pretty clear comparison there. Uh, how much better that upgraded LED looks, and with the diffusing, it looks awesome. So there we go, in the dark. Uh, pretty much no contest at all. The upgraded LED with the diffuse blade looks awesome. Alright, so the next comparison we want to make is to an upgraded LED uh, with a diffused trans white blade. All right, so our middle one here, uh, our Darth Vader actually has a diffused blade that is clear. Uh, so we've still got our original master replicas here for comparison and at the top we're going to have a diffused trans white blade just so you can see the difference. It's actually not on right now. That red color is actually the reflection off of that middle one. So let's turn it on. Okay. So you can see there with the trans white and the camera's trying to readjust here a little bit so we'll try to give it a little bit of help. Okay. Trans white blade looks about as bright, it's well diffused. Um, the only thing that I'd say on that one is, is trans white gives a little bit of a fatter look to the blade, uh, particularly in person. Uh, that extra diffusion, that extra white uh, layer that uh, pulls the light out a little bit more makes it a little bit fatter in person uh, whereas the clear is a little bit less so but really really hardly noticeable um, so both are, are, are a good option um, I'm personally I like the clear blade uh, the way it looks in person with a little bit of uh, the ability to see through it um, a little bit thinner look to it um, but with the trans white there that you see at the top uh, really also a very effective option if it is properly diffused. So for our last comparison we want to take a look at what a day blade looks like, uh, translucent red. So again we'll compare a diffused and undiffused. The Darth Vader closest to the camera right now is actually been diffused. So we turn it on. Again you see nice even blade. Uh, still get a very, very red color. Uh, it glows very nicely despite the fact that it's a, uh, uh, a red day blade. 
Um, but that'll be good, obviously, carrying it out and about. It'll certainly look good in the daylight because the, none of the clear or trans white really show up when you're outdoors in the sunshine. But this will show up uh, when it's not lit, and then when you light it, obviously it does very, very well. Uh, we have a, an undiffused red day blade. Uh, and as you would expect, as we've shown before, really doesn't show up at all without the diffusing in there. So while we've still got that day blade running, I'm going to make a change out here. And in our Darth Maul, we're going to put back in our clear diffuse blade that we've been showing all along. And you can see here very clearly whether it's the red day blade or the clear diffuse blade, very, very little difference in what they look like when they're lit up. Um, they both look very, very good, very, very bright. And if we turn the lights off, uh, they look just outstanding. Uh, just a great, great uh, result from diffusing the blades. So, that is it. Uh, that is the completion of our uh, Darth Maul Master Replicas conversion, disassembly, replacement with a single red Cree LED, uh, and then new blades and uh, properly diffused. Looks excellent. I uh, can actually hardly believe myself that that's just a single Cree LED in there and not uh, a tri-Cree. Nice and bright is going to look awesome when it's out and about and being used.